We survived 100 days in hardcore Minecraft. We set up an underground base, defeated the Ender Dragon, set up the Villager Breeder, and defeated the Wither. I do have a lot that I want to achieve in 200 days. First thing I want to do is to build a modern mansion. I've never really built a modern house before, so this will be interesting to see how it turns out. Then, I want to defeat an ocean monument. Straight after that, I want to create an ocean monument farm for unlimited sea lanterns. I want to build a villager trading hall with a zombie converter, which quite a few of you suggested on my last video. And finally, I want to prove myself once again by defeating the Ender Dragon for the second time. Before we begin, only a small percentage of you who watch my my videos are actually subscribed so if you could do me a huge favor please subscribe it's completely free and you can always change your mind later if you want are you ready let the 200 days begin day 101 we're picking up from where we last left off soaking up the scenery around me i had a big project in mind that i wanted to start gathering resources for straight away so i didn't waste any time i got straight to work on chopping down as many trees as i could <laughs> While gathering resources, I saw a cat that spawned right near my base. I realized this was because of my villager breeder underground. I decided to make a name tag to use on the cat, but when I went back outside, it had vanished. Knowing another would spawn at some point, I wasn't too bothered. I would just have to wait for the next one to spawn. But while looking around, I noticed a broken shipwreck out in the ocean. I decided to go and check it out. The first chest wasn't too bad. I knew there would be another chest somewhere with a buried treasure map inside. I kept looking around with no sign of the second chest. Eventually, I found it our first buried treasure map of this world. And weirdly enough, it was right next to my base. I was very surprised it was this close. I spent the rest of day 104 trying to find the buried treasure. I couldn't find it anywhere. I was slowly losing all hope until I decided to dig further on the land. And there it was. I found the buried chest. The loot was much better than I expected. Our first heart of the sea. This would be useful for crafting a conduit when we decide to craft one. I needed to go and hunt fish if I wanted to tame a cat. I had none at all. I looked in every river, every pond, and even every ocean to find them, yet no sight of any of them. Eventually, I came across some fish. There was quite a few of them, which was pretty good. I got as much as I needed and went straight home. I looked around to see if one had spawned, and no sight of any. I'll get a cat eventually, but now clearly isn't the time. I decided to go and check on my villagers downstairs to see how they were doing. They looked very happy to see me. Of course, they couldn't tell me that. It was just a good guess. Before I got to work on anything specific, I wanted to go to my XP farm to mend any tools and armor that were damaged. For a project I had in mind, I needed a good amount of sand for making glass and concrete, so I fly out to the nearest desert and start collecting as much sand as I could. When I got there, I realized I didn't bring a bed with me. I'd need a bed if I wanted to collect mass amounts of sand in peace. When I got home, I checked to see how much quartz I had from the first 100 days. I had more than I thought I did. So I turned them all into quartz blocks ready for the modern house build. I begin to smelt stacks of sand into glass and I head out to go and hunt down squids. My next block of choice for my modern house is grey concrete. Of course I would need black and white dye to then combine into grey dye for this. I'd need a good amount of it. This squid right here was a little too fast for me though. This one had superpowers. As it was getting dark, I started to head back home but I spot some more squids out on the ocean. I decided to get those as well. Day 108, back at home, I noticed another cat had spawned. This was perfect. I rushed down to my storage room to get my name tag and some fish. I slowly approached the cat with the fish in my hand. I was quick to realize that cats run away regardless if you are crouched or not. I decided to chase it. The chase ended pretty quickly. After feeding it four fish, I tamed the cat and got the best friends forever achievement. My first pet in the world. I was so excited. After that, I decided to start building the framework and layout for my new modern house. I wasn't sure how this would go. I was just improvising at this point. I noticed I'd need to flatten more land and make it more spacious. As soon as I realized this, I started to flatten the area. But then I realized I needed to go and mend my shovel, so I paid the Enderman farm a quick visit. After that, I went back and finished terraforming my home area. I wanted to make it look as natural as possible. To start day 113 off, I got to work on my modern house, adding the stairs to the second floor and filling in the first floor with smooth stone. 
I wasn't really sure what color concrete I should use or which was the best either. I ended up comparing these two side by side. It was very clear that gray concrete would look the best. So that's what I went with. I begin to tower up to build height with the concrete powder. In the early days of your Minecraft world, this is by far the easiest way to convert concrete powder into concrete. I fly down with my elytra and start mining the concrete from the water. Between days 116 and 118 I spent working on my house, planning the structure and block palette as I go along. I probably should have planned this in advance but time is ticking. I was running really low on quartz so I decided to dive back straight into the nether to get some more quartz, making sure I keep away from piglins at all costs. Meanwhile, I stumbled across a bastion. Piglins and piglin brutes rushed over to try and attack me. Luckily for me, I was out of reach. I were able to fend my enemies off from a distance. Once the coast was clear, I stepped inside the bastion. Not one, but four chests awaiting me. The loot in the first chest was okay, but I had a problem. I had no inventory space left. I would need to come back at a later date to get the rest of the loot. I decided it was time to head back home and continue working on my base. I decided to organize my new storage room in the process, so I began laying the chest down. It's now day 125. I dive back into the depths of the nether to get some more quartz. I come across another bastion. This one looks interesting. I do find a few gold blocks scattered on each level. I will be honest though, I've never seen a bastion growing nether wart in the middle before, so this was completely new to me. Either that or I completely forgot this was a thing. I jump towards the chest in the middle and completely fall in lava. I begin to panic. I was able to fly away completely unharmed. I was surprised I only lost half a heart there, so I decided to dive back down to see what was inside. The loot wasn't too great, but it was better than an empty chest, so I took what I could. I arrived home and it was time to try and get Depth Strider on my boots. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get them. I would need to get them though for a new project I'm taking on very soon. It's not really something I need, but it would definitely make my job a lot easier for building the new project. It's now day 128. I dive into the nether to collect some shroom lights and continue working on my base. It was time to label my new storage room and start transferring all my items over. This took me way longer than I anticipated, so this was all I did for two full days. Ocean Monument battle preparation is well underway, brewing potions of water breathing and night vision. I'll be taking some TNT and redstone blocks to help me counter mining fatigue. That's going to be the easiest way I can defeat this Ocean Monument. The big day is now here. I take my boat and head over to the Ocean Monument. I get as close as possible without getting the mining fatigue effects. I begin drinking my potions of night vision, water breathing and strength, but then I realise something. I completely forgot to bring the TNT with me. Well, it was time to head back. Now back at the Ocean Monument with the TNT I needed and it's time to take it on. I swim straight down to the first Elder Guardian's room at the top of the temple. I place down my first piece of TNT and surround it with blocks, then place a redstone block on top. This created a hole in the roof of the temple. I come face to face with my first Elder Guardian, scared for my life that this thing would destroy me. Luckily for me, it didn't do too much damage. Nowhere near what I expected anyway. I defeat the first Elder Guardian out of the three. Two more remain. I head to the next location and begin to repeat the process, but there's a problem. I'm surrounded by guardians. My heart's depleted rapidly. I begin to panic. Scared for my life, I swim to safety and block myself in. I make a very new mistake here, blocking myself in and I completely forgot I had mining fatigue on. I put myself in a very sticky situation here. Eventually, I broke free from my own trap. I place TNT down on the second Elder Guardian and begin to break in. I was able to gain access pretty easily, but fighting this Elder Guardian wasn't so easy. This one was surrounded by other guardians protecting him. I could not afford to be too risky here. One wrong move and this could all be over very quickly. I wasn't willing to let that happen though. In the process, I made my job so much harder. The elder guardian managed to escape. It's now swimming freely with other guardians. Now I'm in trouble. I came up with a genius plan though. I took cover underneath the temple as there wasn't much space there. It wasn't an ideal situation, but it was all I could do at this point. After many attempts of fighting the Elder Guardian, I decided to risk it and go all in. This is the moment I quickly regretted that decision. I'm completely surrounded and being targeted by all Guardians in sight. I really started to worry now. This could all end right here. I dive straight back down to cover with only four hearts left. I decided to wait and recover all my health. I recovered all my health and decided to go again. This time I was prepared to take damage thanks to the Golden Apple. Without them, I'd have been totally dead here. I take a few more swipes at the Elder Guardian and still not defeated it. I had to take cover once again. Enough was enough. I fly straight back up to the Elder Guardian and within one swipe of the sword, the second one is defeated. After all that, I'm still not done here. One more Elder Guardian still remains. I bust open the last room where the final Elder Guardian is located. 
What a roller coaster this battle has been. We have come out victorious. It was time to get back in my boat and head home. It's now day 131. I go back to the XP farm to get as much XP as possible. I need to get Depth Strider as soon as I can so I can start my next project. I enchant every book possible in hopes of getting Depth Strider free. In the end, it was all for nothing. Well, I say that, I get two Unbreaking free books which I could equip on my Elytra. That's something I needed to do since I got them. I also added Mending and Unbreaking onto my shield as loads of you pointed out to me in the comments on my last video. Because I didn't get Depth Strider free, I decided to go back into the end and get some more XP. This time, I decided to enchant Diamond Boots instead. And then the first try, I was able to get Depth Strider free. I was so happy. I could now start preparing for the Guardian farm. I dive back into the Nether to get some Soul Sand. I'd been needing lots of this for this farm. I also needed Obsidian, so I went down to my Diamond Mine to collect some of that. It was time. Let's get started on building the farm. The farm is now complete. I decided to AFK here for a little bit. Let's go and check out how much I got. I was unbelievably surprised at how much this thing produced. I was very happy with the farm and if you guys want to build this farm for yourself, credit to Shulkercraft for the design. I will link the tutorial for this down in the description. When I got home, I decided to take on an end city or two. I wanted more shulker boxes, both for condensed storage and for building bigger projects in the future. I came across an end city pretty quickly. This felt like it was filled with shulkers, especially this tall section I was in. I didn't really get too much loot from this one. I did get a few shulker shells, but that was about it. I took the ender dragon head and the elytra from the ship and I noticed another end city in the distance. So I go over and check it out. After looting the end city and collecting shulker shells, I had more than what I came for. When I got home, I started to smelt down all the spare armor from the end cities down into nuggets and crafted some shulker boxes. I was able to make 22 of these. I was more than happy with the amount that I made. It's now day 142. I decided to go and explore my seed. While I was exploring, I come across a shipwreck stuck in the ice. This wasn't what I was looking for though. I was in need of a mining trip, so I spent ages flying around my seed to come across a mesa biome. I was informed in my comments on my first 100 days that I should mine in a mesa for more resources. I wanted more gold more than anything for crafting golden apples. While I was mining, I came across diamonds. I mean, I wasn't looking for diamonds at this point. Of course I'm gonna take them. While I was here though, I came across a mineshaft. I was getting flashbacks from when I found the seven spawners in my first 100 days of this world. I felt more than prepared to take these on now, so I dived straight into the mineshaft to see what I could find. I felt like I could not stop finding gold, which of course I was really happy with. I did however come across a couple of spider spawners. Taking these out felt so much easier than they did in the first 10 days. It's now the end of day 145, it's time to adventure home. Rather than flying back, I had obsidian on me to make a nether portal to travel back in there instead. Everyone knows it's much faster to travel greater distances in the nether. When I got home, I was greeted with a space bubble achievement, something I completely forgot about. Now is the time for my next project. I began stripping out my old storage room and digging out a room. I wanted to build a villager trading hall underground, so I got straight to work on that. While building the villager trading hall, I ran out of sticky pistons. Luckily for me, it was currently nighttime. I knew where a swamp was, so I flew out there to try and find some slimes lurking around. I was able to find one quite easily. I got more than enough slime and decided to head back to continue the build. I started to build a tunnel for the villagers to pathfind around, which will make getting the villagers in a lot easier. It's now time to get the zombies in place, possibly the hardest part about this project. Timing was key here. I take the zombie down into its area and trap him using trapdoors to my advantage. I place a name tag on the zombie so it doesn't despawn. I notice I left a hole in the floor where the redstone is. I had a problem here. I went in and made the zombie follow me out. I patched up the hole that he got stuck in and managed to get out and trap the zombie back inside. It's now time to get the villagers in my trading hall. My first villager is now in place. Time to re-roll the trades and get better enchantment books. 
After many days of repeating the same process, we finally have our two villagers in their place. Time to turn them into zombie villagers and convert them back. Cannot beat villager discounts. And with that being said, the villager trading hall is now finally complete. It's now day 162. I decided to go on a huge quartz mining trip. I spent days in the nether mining for quartz. I now have an idea of how I wanted to build my house and I would need a lot of quartz to build it. So between day 162 and 169, I spent in the nether mining quartz. That's literally all I did. After turning them all into blocks, I had over a shulker box full of quartz blocks, which is more than what I need. Like I said in my first 100 days, it's better to have more than I need than it is to be needing more. The final thing I now need to do is to mine gravel. I knew where a gravel mountain's biome was, so I travelled there to mine as much gravel as possible. This would be needed for crafting concrete powder and then turning it into concrete. And same again, building up to build limit and mining the concrete in the water. I found this way the most efficient. The last thing that I'm going to need for this build is spruce wood, so I spent two days growing and chopping down trees. I am now ready to start work on my new house. This by far is my biggest and best build of the series so far. Between days 174 and 181, I spent working on my house exterior. Then straight after I finished the house on day 183, I started building something I should have built in the first 100 days, an iron farm. This took me quite a while, it looks easy to build and get working, right? But not for me. Getting the villagers in wasn't so bad, but getting that one zombie into the composter took me quite a few nights and many attempts to do. I'm not quite sure why I struggled with this, I used to be able to do this in the first few attempts. The entrance to the collection system is right next to my villager trading hall, which is very convenient. I also built it close to my house, so AFKing wasn't really necessary. It would just collect iron for me in the background while I was at home. It's now day 188. I need more sand for my last farm that I'm going to build of this video, so I head straight to the desert and start collecting some more sand. I didn't really need as much as I collected, but it was a good idea to collect more than I need to store it for further use. It was now time to go home, smelt the sand and prepare for my next farm build. Can you guess what we're building yet? Alright, it's fine, I'm gonna tell you. We are building a sugarcane farm. Let's get it started. With the sugarcane farm being all done, I decided to head back to my iron farm storage to see how well it's doing. And honestly, I was surprised with what I see. Six stacks already. I'm very happy with the rate of this farm. It was time to prepare for one final battle. I wanted to prove myself once again and defeat the Ender Dragon. I am more prepared than I will ever be now. So I head straight into the nether to collect some gas tears. And then when I got home, I brewed all the potions that I would possibly need and make more golden apples. We are ready. I set off to the end and prepare for my next battle, the Ender Dragon once again. I placed the End Crystals down to respawn the dragon. While I was waiting, an Enderman started a fight with me. It got my health so low that I thought the battle was over before it even started. I reacted quickly and flew away with the fireworks to heal. I didn't realise how much damage it was doing. This was probably because I was wearing the Elytra. The dragon has now re
And before I knew it, the Ender Dragon fight was over. I was happy. I knew I'd be able to do this once again. So next time I respawn the Ender Dragon, who thinks I should spawn the Wither at the same time? I think that sounds like a plan. Now back home, I didn't have much time left on this world. It's time to decorate my base area. I spent day 194 to 199 just decorating. Building the bridge to the carrot farm, carving and decorating paths, scattering leaves and hidden lighting, and adding lampposts around the area to keep it well lit without torches. On day 200, I create a level 2 beacon and place it down. It was long overdue from the last episode, but finally I decided to place it. I spent the rest of the day harvesting and planting carrots, but before I knew it, day 200 came to a close. I decided to watch the sunset. I really hope you enjoyed seeing me survive another 100 days in Hardcore Minecraft. I have a lot that I want to achieve within 300 days, so if you guys would like to see that, let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.